the rest of the story. Once upon an unsullied continent more than three centuries ago, there lived along the banks of what would eventually be called the Connecticut River a tribe of Native Americans named the Podencock. They belonged to the Algonquin Nation. In Algonquin, Podencock means lowland beyond, referring to the low, lush meadowland that once was their home. If their name also vaguely suggests a less than warlike nature, you've not been misled, for while their neighbors had fierce reputations, the Pequots and the Mohicans, the Narragansetts and the Mohawks, the Potencock mostly minded their own business. They farmed corn and beans and squash and tobacco. They fished for shad and salmon in the river. They hunted turkey and deer in the woods that became the white man's metropolis of South Windsor, Connecticut. Citizens of South Windsor find Podencock arrowheads in their backyards even today. But what nobody has seen in those parts since more than half a century before George Washington was born is the Podencock themselves. That's right, for while other tribes survived, although diminished to modern day, or were extinguished in some dramatic, historically verifiable way, the Podencock Indians simply mysteriously vanished disappeared from the North American landscape without a trace. And the reason, well, that's the rest of the story. The best guess is the Podencock Indians were once some 1,500 strong, divided into three clans, the Namaroke, the Scanticook, and the Hokanum, all ranged all the way to East Hanford. The Podencock were the first Native Americans to witness the arrival of Dutch explorer Adrian Block when he sailed up the Connecticut River in 1614. Although peaceful, they may have towered over their European visitors since many Podencock skeletons found in the burial grounds measure more than six feet. The Pequot Indians, were their principal enemies, were such a nuisance, in fact, that the Podencock once tried to persuade the English to move in next door just to drive the Pequots from the neighborhood. But it wasn't a tribal war that did the Podencock in. It wasn't a famine. It wasn't a plague. Instead, they quietly, unobtrusively lost the most valuable asset any tribe anywhere can have. They lost their identity. After patching up differences, they palled around with the Pequots until they became Pequots. And the Narragansetts and the Mohawks and the Mohicans. I'm saying that they joined other tribes, perhaps one at a time, until the peace-loving Podencocks succumbed to miscegenation and ceased to exist. And as a result, for hundreds of years, they've been laughing in New England, laughing at the Podencock Indians. For the dark woods and lush meadows and sun-dappled streams where they once hunted and farmed and fished, the lowland beyond from which they unceremoniously vanished into the pages of history came to be characterized as nowhere land, any nowhere land. To this day, when we generically describe any place too remote, too lost, or perhaps too tiny even to find, we recall the local joke of Connecticut's conquering white men. Of course, we too invoke the abbreviation pronunciation of the long-gone Algonquin tribe. For when we say nowhere, we say podunk. Now, you may have believed there was actually such a place as podunk, but now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>